Hi, I'm Willie. Welcome to my channel. Thank you for being here. I appreciate each and every one of you. And what we're going to do in this video is we are going to configure SSL inspection on our GCC 6010 firewall. So let's hop on over to it. And I'll tell you one thing that Grandstream does really well is their documentation center is fantastic. So it's documentation.grandstream.com. And I've got the GCC 6010 SSL proxy settings up here. Now I'm going to do an SSL certificate import into my local machine, but then I'm going to do a couple videos, one for Mac, and I'm going to do one for deploying a certificate with Active Directory. So we'll get those videos done. But right here, we're logged into our GCC 6010. So we're going to go to the firewall module. We're going to go down to SSL proxy. We're going to go down to basic settings, and we are going to enable the SSL proxy. Now, what we have to do is we don't have a CA certificate. So what we need to do is we need to generate a certificate. And what this certificate does is once it's installed on the client devices, is this what allows the GCC to um, be the proxy or intercept those SSL connections and complete that for us without our computer, our web browser kind of freaking out about it. So we're going to go ahead and we're going to add a CA certificate and we're just going to call this Willy Lab. We can choose our key length here. We're just going to go with 2048. We'll do SHA-256. Now this is our expiration in days and you can see that we can go from one to nine, 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 nine. So depending on what your policy or what your procedure is for certificates, for me, I'm just gonna do 999 on this. We can change all of the things on this certificate. It's not just automatically generated for us. We can put our own information in here, which is good if we're deploying this you know, in a, in a business or someplace where we need to have the assurance that this is a certificate that we created. So not just some random, you know, certificate that is just spit out automatically for us. So I'm going to go ahead and generate this certificate. And I'm going to select Willy Lab. I'm going to download the certificate. Uh, I'm going to keep it. And then what I'm going to do is I'm going to open the file. And I am going to, first of all, if you look here, it was issued to Willy Lab. And then you can go through all the details. It'll give us all of the, the information that we, we uh, put in there. So I'm going to hit install certificate. I'm going to do local machine. Of course, it's going to ask me um, where I want to put it. Now, if we come over to the documentation, you can see it's got to go into the trusted root certificate authority on uh, Windows. So let's do this. Let's browse and we're going to do trusted root certificate authorities and we're going to say OK and next and finish. And that certificate has now been installed and we can use that. So right here, uh, source addresses, we can add it, but right here it tells us all source addresses have been proxied by SSL. If manually adding new addresses, only the added source address will be proxied by SSL. So by default, our 80.1 should be proxied. So what I've got to do real quick, I'm going to pause this video because I need to disable one of my network adapters uh, so that all of my traffic is going out through this firewall. Hold on just a second. Okay, so <clears throat> all of my traffic is now going through the GCC 6010, and we've got our certificate installed. So how do we know if our certificate is working? So let's do um, let's do like um, Google.com, and let's pull this up and look at our secure connection and look at the certificate you can see that Willie's lab issued the Google certificate. So this is the GCC uh, doing its thing. So what we can do now is <clears throat> now we can actually inspect SSL. So if we come in here and we want to do something like content control and we do web filtering, I turned it on and to filter HTTPS URL, please enable SSL proxy. We have that done. So we can come in here 
we can add uh, URL matches. We can do uh, wild cards. So we, we could allow, you know, do an override or a block there. Here we can come in here and we can do URL uh, category filtering. We can do keyword filtering. Um, so if we add a, um, let's see here, we'll just call this Willie and we'll do status block. We'll do wildcard. We'll do Willie Howe and oops, didn't mean to click that so now if we search google for like willie howe it should in theory block that i don't know if that's going to work that's the first time i've tried that we'll come back to that here in just a second but let's do category filtering and we'll just pick this this top and we'll do a, a block all adult so let's open up a new in private window and let's try playboy.com Okay, even though it's HTTPS, all right, this is risky. So now let's pull up Google and let's do Willie Howe. So it didn't filter that, which is interesting. Um, so I'll have to work on that a little bit more because I've got to figure out where this keyword gets blocked at let's see here yeah I'll have to play around with that but you can see that the uh, URL uh, category blocking does work okay so real quick I went to the documentation center to see what I was doing wrong with the keyword filtering and apparently what I need to do is I need to use some asterisks and this is actually going to be in line in the URL uh, where that's going to be where that's going to be blocked. So if I if I edit this and I do really how like this and I hit save, then what should happen is we should get that block page. And that is exactly what happened. So you can <clears throat> do the uh, you can do that the keywords there. Um, the other thing that I saw in here is that uh, where the log is. So if we go to firewall module security log right here, security log, we can see, uh, and you can see I was playing around with some of these other URLs making sure that the filtering worked. Um, and so you can see all of these things that got, got blocked. Um, we can also set up email notifications so that we are notified when somebody hits either a filtered application, a DNS filter, or a web filtering alert. So, but you can come in here, see the IP address that tried to reach it. Obviously, if this is your, um, you know, if this is your network, you're going to be able to correlate these IP addresses um, back to a machine. So you can see that it is working. We got uh, further details here. So you can scroll through these and see what that's all about. The other uh, thing about this is on the SSL proxy, let's say that you've got public Wi-Fi and you want to use your GCC to, to be the router for that, but you're going to use and outside like just a DNS filter. What you can do is you can specify the source address of your, um, of your guest Wi-Fi network and you can exempt it from being filtered, right? So you just let your DNS filtering company handle all that. So uh, that's how we do the SSL proxy, uh, the SSL inspection on the GCC 6010. We're going to dive into some more of this, like the anti-malware, the intrusion prevention, all that stuff in an upcoming you know, series of videos. So if you've got any questions, things you specifically want to see, leave them down in the comments. And if you like this video, give it a thumbs up, subscribe, comment, and share. Follow me on Twitter and TikTok. Those links are down below, along with affiliate links, a Patreon link. And if you need IT consulting, head on over to willyhow.com, fill out our contact form, 
and someone will be in touch with you as soon as possible. Go on over to community.willyhow.com, sign up, share your experience, or ask your questions. We want to build that community. Once again, I'm Willie. I want to thank you for being here, and as always, I'll see you in the next video.